So, Waves of Love is a piece for orchestra. I wrote it for the BBC National Orchestra of Wales and it was commissioned by the Vale of Glamorgan Festival for their 2020 festival. I've been really lucky with orchestral music over the last few years, having written a bunch of pieces for all sorts of orchestras. The BBC Now, Orion Orchestra, National Orchestra of Brazil, Tokyo Philharmonic Orchestra, London Graduate Orchestra, Cambridge Graduate Orchestra, and I also worked on a project realising lists only opera, which has had a lot of performances all over the world. I've also won a bunch of prizes for my orchestral music. All of this is to say that although I love writing music, I really love writing orchestral music and I've put a lot of energy into it. When people ask me what classical music they should listen to in order to get into contemporary classical music, I usually list the following four pieces. Short Ride in a Fast Machine by John Adams, Bright Blue Music by Michael Talk, The Welcome Arrival of Rain by Judith Weir, and Rainbow Body by Christopher Theophanidis. For anyone really into their new music, this is probably quite poppy and accessible. I haven't really got a problem with that, and I think they're all pretty big, exciting pieces. They also all use a musical language that is vaguely similar to my own, and honestly, I just think they're all really cool, exciting pieces. So when I was offered the chance to write for orchestra, I immediately knew I was going to do something massive. I wanted it to be a bit like those pieces, something to knock your hat off, no messing around. There's nothing better than an orchestra going at it full throttle, even if you need to show a bit of restraint to make this kind of music as impactful as possible. For me, the hardest part about writing any piece is actually coming up with the idea that I want to use. Sometimes I'll kind of know what I want to do right from the outset. I sort of did with Waves of Love, but about 60% of the time I haven't got a clue, and even if I feel sure about what I want to write, it totally changes once it's on the page. With Waves of Love, I knew how I wanted to start the piece, great, but about after four minutes in, I was stumped. For months. To get over this, I just kept writing and writing. When it became too much, I'd put the piece in a drawer for a few days and work on something else. Rinse and repeat. It's a slow and hard process. I have to say I'm a firm believer in grafting though. Nothing comes of nothing, you just have to get on with it sometimes. My initial ideas usually come from improvisations or from pieces I'm learning to play. I sometimes write at the sequencer, I sometimes work at an instrument, but as far as orchestral composition is concerned, whether or not I'm writing at the piano or at the computer, I almost always work from short score, or at least it starts that way. For example, when I wrote my pieces Acoustical Anatomy and My Mind Directs My World, I spent a lot of time working over ideas at the piano. With Acoustical Anatomy, I was having some downtime in university, waiting for my keyboard player to show up for a rehearsal, so I went into my college chapel to do some practice. I stuck my phone on to record, and the first thing I played was this, literally. Despite my wobbly piano playing, I thought, that was good, I'll never be able to do that again. Even so, I did try to do it again, it didn't work, so I saved the recording, went home, transcribed what I played, and used it as a short score. And that ended up being about the first four minutes of the piece. I then orchestrated some of what I had. This definitely helps me move forward. Then I kept on writing in short score, in my sequencer, until it was totally finished. I did a similar thing for my piece, My Mind Directs My World. I was noodling at a student's piano one day, showing them C major scales. They went out of the room and I played a little C major idea. I liked it, so I booked out a piano room in my university and performed it ten or so times, just improvising at the piano, uh, recording it all on my phone, the phone I'm using to film all of this, and um, then I went home, listened through them and picked the bits I liked.
After that, I orchestrated what I had in the short score and then I just kept composing freely. No short score. I was guided by the general ideas I had, and I sort of knew what I wanted to do, but some of it, like the microtone lending, microtones are, the, are these like really small notes in between notes, that material didn't really work easily on piano, you know, it was hard to push that around because those notes are not on a piano. So I just wrote that straight onto the orchestral score. I don't really have access to an acoustic piano at the moment. I do have an electric piano, and I hate it when people whinge about electric pianos, but there's nothing like noodling away at a massive Steinway, which I could access at university, I'm not at university anymore, or some other full-size acoustic 88 key instrument. The feel is different, and that difference is important to me for some reason. So right now, I feel most comfortable composing in my head and on Sibelius. I'm 110% sure that it isn't a fashionable thing to say that I like composing in Sibelius, but I think score editors like this are really useful as long as you are acutely mindful of real-world technicalities. I can re-listen, delete, copy, invert, rotate, retrograde, and toss stuff around with wild abandon, free from my bad piano playing and dogmatic guitar playing. And as I said, I kind of knew what I wanted to do with Waves of Love. So I wasn't too lost at sea with this piece. I wasn't starting from scratch. So let's talk about the actual musical material in Waves of Love. The whole piece is constructed from a two-bar idea made up of constant quavers, all in lovely, lovely C major. I'm not trying to make a point by writing in this key. I just think it's a cool idea. To my ear, this material feels almost like a riff. It's reasonably goal-directed in terms of harmony, as in you could justify it as tonal. I'm not thinking that way. It's short and sweet, it feels groovy, and it's simple and direct. To me, this is a cool, upfront, energy-filled idea. Just as a quick aside, I sometimes feel like an idea is dead in the water if I have to dress it up with complexity. The first album I ever had, aside from Smurf Score Pop again, was Enema of the State by Blink-182. There's this fun interview with Tom DeLong, the guitarist and one of the singers, where he says that he wanted to make music uh, for that album um, in a way that kind of sounded like an intense nursery rhyme. Um, and I like the idea of like the, the core idea of a piece of music being really, really simple, even from the point of its conception. I heard progressive rock guitarist Pliny say something similar recently too, except he stated that he wanted his music to be simple like a lullaby, with the excitement coming from what you do with the idea. You keep the basic core of it really simple and strong and then the way you play with it is where the complexity and the excitement comes from. And I'm hoping that's what I've done in Waves of Love. So anyway, I take the idea and I shift it around. It's repeated and it's developed. After this, I start to orchestrate it. I really feel like orchestral colour is related to my sense of style. And in order to eke out some of the potential of the music that I'm writing, I'll sustain certain melodic notes. One of my teachers, Arlene Sierra, described this as putting the pedal down on the orchestra. Thinking of the sustained notes as like putting down the sustained pedal on a piano. For example, a flute plays a note and it's held on for a really long time in another instrument, like a violin or something. It's a really cool sound and it helps me to build the basis of a sense of harmony in a musical landscape that seems quite sparse. Once I've played around with the music a bit, I'll begin to get a sense of what I want to do with the harmony and what interesting things happen naturally as I compose it. I'll then chop it up a bit, overlay ideas and stretch and pull things apart. 
A lot of the time I use the rotate function on Sibelius. I find it really funny that we have single buttons that help us do all of those frustrating set theoretical ideas. I spent years in music school drawing out matrices and working out prime sets and set classes and Z relations and all that sort of stuff. Now I just push the fancy button that does it all for me. The journey of the piece is definitely the hardest thing for me and unfortunately there is no fancy button for that. I try not to do something as a reaction to anything I've been told. If I want to make a proper decision, then I need to mull over my options and slowly decide what sounds the best. Often the process of choosing the right structural change is a process of deciding not to use other ideas. For example, I rewrote the end of this piece three or four times. The first one sounded too much like Jupiter. The second version is what I ended up actually using, but not until I deleted it and tried the third version, which became the final movement in my solo piano piece Praise of Method, and also the fourth version, which sounded like some big oceanic soundscape and mixed with the end of Sibelius V. Probably because Waves of Love was supposed to be paired with John Luther Adams' Become Ocean. I do lots of score research before I write a piece. I can't do it during the writing process because I'll end up trying to rewrite the piece I've just researched. There's precious little space in my head for music. I've got to keep it, I've got to keep it clear. After months of lovingly hammering away at this piece, the path for the journey was all laid out. The main idea formed the basis of each new section and each new section finally flowed. So brace yourself for a platter of snippets. These are some of my favorite bits. Number one, I like adding a groovy bass line to the main idea. Number two, I like repeating the quaver pattern over and over, but suddenly making certain notes much lower. I like adding groovy bongos, congas and syncopation. I like making a really epic melody. This happens twice. The slower passages in this piece were inspired by karma pieces, which kind of makes sense, right? I love Takamitsu's From Me Flow's What You Call Time. Every page is packed with exciting orchestration and unusual colours, and I love the airy textures at the start of Unsuk Chin's Violin Concerto. But for me, the opening texture of the welcome arrival of Rain by Judith Weir and Ralph Vara's Piano Concerto really served as models. 
big blocks of diatonic sound that tidally move more wave metaphors around the piece. Percussion is something that's really important to the sound of the modern orchestra too. My two favourite examples, outside of the Takamitsu I just mentioned, are Thomas Adez's Violin Concerto and Francisco Coll's Mural. They both sound ultra-modern, and I think it's because of the percussion. The example I always like to give is at the start of the second movement of Thomas Adez's Violin Concerto. The players have to change instrument almost every bar. One other big section I'd like to chat about in Waves of Love is towards the end. There's a cataclysmic key change to C-flat major about three quarters of the way in. I chatted about this sort of thing in my Praise of Method video, but I like to associate flat heavy keys with the idea of love. So it was important to me that reaching this key really felt hard and this piece is about having the perseverance to rise over and over and over again, finally overcoming everything that's holding you back so you can finally reach that ecstatic transcendent love paradise. But perhaps what I mean to say there is the wave after wave of developed and transformed material is what inspired the title. Over time, the music becomes more aggressive and the ideas eventually rip through their quaver shells, collapsing under the weight of their own explosive becoming, emerging transformed. I'm not going to show this section though, because some things are best experienced in real life. You'd have to listen to the whole piece and if you're going to do that, then you should hear it in the flesh. I feel reasonably confident in saying that this is the best piece I've written. I feel similarly about Praise of Method 2, which I was writing at the same time as Waves of Love. I don't know whether that's because I just love the taste of my own cooking, but I push myself further with these compositions than I have with any other pieces that I've ever written, and I absolutely love them. I hope you enjoy them too. If you've got this far in the video, then thank you for listening and watching, and please like, subscribe, and leave a comment. Thank you very much.